Well, as a business coach for moms, my job is not only to help the mother get the job done, the entrepreneur get the job, it's not only to challenge her uh, past her self-limiting thoughts, it's not only to um, help her to become better than she thinks that she is, but my job is also to nurture her. You know, as moms, we nurture everyone and take care of everyone else. Well, I know that she can get the job done. I know she can run the business, but she has so many other things on her plate that sometimes that business gets put on the back burner. And when that's done, she needs someone to remind her with love, with, um, with experience, with care, that that needs to go back on the front burner. You know, that can wait. And so that is my job as a business coach for moms. I nurture uh, my, my clients. Uh, my whole catapult coaching program is based on a metaphor that we are these beautiful and powerful felines. I see us as tigresses and lionesses. Uh, we're this, these beautiful, powerful creatures. And yet, we have to take care of the cubs and we have things that are in the jungle <laughs> for the sake of the cubs, the children. And so when I'm coaching, I not only encourage and challenge, I not only uh, push and motivate, but I nurture her. I take our conversations, I summarize it, I put it in a report, the goals, the dates, all of that, and I email to the entrepreneur. And I do that because it helps the lioness stay focused, it helps the lioness stay focused. You know, we can have great conversation, great plans. She can write them down, but as soon as we hang up that phone, she has little ones to tend to who want her immediately, or bigger ones who need to be driven to different places. And so um, that's one of the things that I do for my clients as well that most coaches don't. The other thing that I do for uh, moms is that I demand that they come to our meeting, even if it's over the phone. Most of my clients, are I coach them by phone. And I demand that they come to the meeting 100% as the entrepreneur. I, they have to come to the meeting, not as a business mommy, but as a business woman. Um, so that means that they can't, you know, while they're talking to me on the phone, they can't be making sandwiches for the children. While they're talking to me on the phone, they can't, uh, you know, fold clothes. They have to come to our meetings 100% as that entrepreneur. Uh, the only thing that I'll tolerate is the breastfeeding while we are uh, in our business. A lot of moms don't have time to devote their full attention to their business. And so I um, see myself as one who, you know, who gives her permission, who reminds her that she has to, who lets her know that it's very important that she gives her full attention to her business as well as to herself. And I, I get on that phone with her and I honor her as a businesswoman and as a, as a mother. I honor her as an entrepreneur and I honor her as someone who is, who will be and who is successful. And so, um, you know, in order to be that powerful lioness in the jungle that hunts and, and gets what she wants, she has to see herself as that. And, um, and so I consider myself a, you know, proud to be able to hold that mirror up to that lioness and says, this is who you are, go for it. Well, I'm like a lot of moms. I have started and stopped several business during my stay-at-home career, but um, some of them were successful and some were not. And I'll tell you the ones that were not successful had nothing at all to do with my abilities. Um, you know, I'm a, I'm a business woman. I have a business degree. Uh, I've always studied the markets. I've always studied investments and marketing and different aspects of business. Um, I was a corporate woman. Um, I even marketed my business knowledge and my teaching skills to become a corporate trainer, facilitating one-day seminars throughout the country and around the so world. So when the businesses were not successful, it had nothing to do with my abilities, it was due to my mommy guilt, my mom-induced pressures. Um, there were times when I would feel so guilty about taking money from the family or taking time out for my business that I would inevitably sabotage myself or I would feel the pressure to immediately start making money. And when I didn't, I would abort the business within months. 
You know, it's it's uh, and that's how a lot of moms are. A lot of them was fueled by hormonal pregnancies, life situations. You know, uh, at one point I was very successful, and we ended up getting custody of my nephew. And uh, you know, that took a couple of years, so I slowly you know, moved to four states and, and all the challenges of that. And so that was diagnosed with breast cancer. And that again, you know, that took some adjustments. I had to stop and take care of myself. I had to look at it. Now ironically, throughout those years, I would always find other women who were struggling in their businesses and I would coach them. And I didn't even use the word coach. I always considered myself just helping them. And they would become successful and go on. <laughs> so women started calling me, and or I would bump into someone at the grocery store, and she would, it, we would, we would start talking, and she would tell me about her business, and then you know talk about her struggles. And I was always able to see her situation and help her through, uh, you know, until she became stable. But I'll tell you, in 2001, when I was diagnosed with breast cancer, it was then that I decided that. I didn't want to just have lived a, you know, a great, holy, wonderful life, raising five children and helping people. I wanted to live on purpose. My fear when I was diagnosed with breast cancer was not that I was going to die. My fear was that I had not lived on purpose. You know, I lived with purpose. You know, I lived with my children, with my husband. They gave me purpose. I lived with the Bible as my foundation, but I hadn't lived on purpose. You know, I was, I was waiting for God to make something happen, but living on purpose meant that I, with all of my heart, was going to make something happen. And what I wanted to make happen in my life was that I touched as many people with my gifts and my talents that were given to me, that I touched as many people as I came in contact with. So it wasn't enough just to bump into someone and help them periodically here and there when I felt like it, when I so felt led to do so. I wanted to do it intentionally. I wanted to do it on purpose. And so I made a commitment. I made a promise to God, which is really interesting because when we make promises to God, we're really promising to do the thing that we're supposed to do anyway. <laughs> it's not like we're doing God a favor. But I made a promise that I would use my gifts and my talents to do exactly what I was placed on this earth to do, and that is to help people. And so, um, I, so I started coaching on given a system you know, that I use today, still use today, a system that I use to help women to become successful. Yeah, well, you know, some people say that I have a gift, that I've been gifted to bring people to success. Well, I, you know, I, I don't know, I, but I, I do know that coaching and encouraging and challenging women, being a resource, for women is so innately me that I do it without thoughts. Person talking about gifts and they were saying that it's so easy for you when you are gifted that you assume that's what everyone else is doing. Then that's the other thing that kind of led me to the whole thought of I need to do that on purpose. Um, and so it, it, I love doing it. Also, I, I feel obligated. I feel obligated to my creator. I feel obligated to women to develop my talents and gifts for the sole purpose of blessing and helping them. So, you know, I, I, I don't know if I'm gifted to bring people to success, but I do feel obligated. I do know that it is so innately me that it's, it's easy to do. Um, and frankly, I get a kick out of seeing moms walk away from my services wealthier, more confident, and ready to take on the world because I know that this will affect their children and their children's children. I would say to any entrepreneurial mom, if you are looking to grow your income, if you're looking to renew your passion and your motivation about your business, if you're looking to move past procrastination and fear, if you are looking to role model success to your children, if you want to be better at what you do, it doesn't matter if you've started the business or you have not yet started the business. You need a you business, need a business coach. coach. And I would count it an honor and a privilege to coach you to success. Go to my website 
and download my free audio coaching program. It is 100% free, no obligations. You know, you don't have to worry about me overwhelming your emails with a lot of other emails. Um, take the coaching program and use it to help you lay the foundation for your already established business or the business that you have not yet started. Uh, use the coaching program. If you have any questions, you can always email me, Lady T at the Business Coach for Moms .com. I desire for every mom what I desire for myself, and that is success and prosperity. I desire joy for you as you raise your children, and I desire peace for your home.